Well, that brings us to the last presentation of this um, session. Uh, before we go into discussion and questions, uh, Catherine, can I invite you to tell us about GDI Hub and what you can do in this space? Thank you very much, and that's a tough act to follow, John, so I'll, I'll do my best. Um, I'm Cathy Holloway. I'm the Academic Director of the Global Disability Innovation Hub, and for those who like audio descriptions, I'm a white, middle-aged woman that's going grey but still has some brown hair, uh, wearing a shirt and a suit uh, and glasses. Um, so we're, I'm going to talk today about accelerating AT innovation and some of the work that we've done with the global dis well, in the Global Disability Innovation Hub, which I co-founded, out of the UK to try and help build the sector. Oops, I could have held back. Uh, so GDI Hub came out of London 2012, which had more power athletes from more countries than ever before. That wasn't by chance, when the UK public were first surveyed about coming to the Paralympics, less than 1% of people said they would buy a ticket. When asked why in focus groups, they said, why would I want to go and watch those people? It was very othering language, and people's opinion, I think, of disability was very stigmatizing and wrong. But through a lot of hard work, and one of my co-founders, uh, Victoria Austin and Ian McKinnon, were part of that team, attitudes were changed. It was full for the first time, history was made, and I was lucky enough to be introduced to Vicky and Ian um, in 2016 when I had an idea to set up an, acceler an assistive technology space where we would co-design assistive technologies together, but also elements of the built environment, and Vicky and Ian already had a plan for some work on policy and legacy in, from the London 2012 Games. We invited everybody that was moving to the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park in London, and sometimes people think London's very big and very exciting and full of money, but East London was not like that. People died of every, every weekend. It was a field filled of fridges and tires. It was very run down and nobody wanted to invest in it. But there was a blueprint for transforming that space and that blueprint needed public and private investment. And in order to get that blueprint, we needed the Olympics and the Paralympics. The greatest thing about the Olympics and the Paralympics in London 2012, far, far, far before Brexit, <laughs> was everyone felt very proud um, of what we were able to achieve in inclusion. And luckily, we managed to keep going with that agenda. We now work in 41 countries, and we've reached over 28 million people globally. Now, obviously, we can't do that alone. Um, and although we don't look sometimes like people with disabilities, our directors, we do um, are disabled. Um, and we have tried to work in partnership with people on the ground in every country we've worked in where we try to build capacity in both directions. We never assume that we know the answer. We always assume that none of us have the answer actually alone and that together we can be a powerhouse of insight, innovation and technical excellence. We're lucky enough to be housed within University College London and we have no, many, many um, partners across the world in academic but also in industry. So we've come up recently in a bit of a brainstorm, two day away day, with the idea that we are brave, creative and human um, and we try to live up to those values where we can. So to give you an idea of what we're doing, we're building an insights hub. Um, we've already got some level of insights. So we have population health data, thanks to Wei, who's sitting in the front here from the WHO and her great work of trying to get the RATA data to us. Um, but how do we link things like population health data, where we know where the need is for assistive technology or where there's unmet need globally, with brilliant innovations like those from Elisabetta and John sitting next to me? How do we begin to build that? And so the Insights Hub will do that um, and it will come uh, in April. We also do bespoke consultancy, so we find that people, um, we work with Gato on some research projects, but people like the World Bank or the Asian Development Bank, a lot of people are desperately trying to do good disability inclusion, both in the investment space, in building better infrastructure, in better f finance accessibility. But oftentimes, it's difficult to infiltrate the systems, so we try to work with companies to understand what their stage gates are and how you can build in the parameters that will make sure that inclusion is is valued monetarily within project making decisions, but also isn't left as a guideline. We know that when accessibility is left with a guideline, people get left behind. Um, so there's some of the examples that we work with. Motivation, some of you will know, a wheelchair um, NGO uh, working across Africa and other countries and Asia. Um, and we have been working with them recently on their new, how to bring their new design to market. And also we co-author, well, we wrote the disability inclusive uh, education ICT landscape review with the World Bank. 
Our Venture Studio, um, some of you will have heard Bernard, who was here um, today and yesterday, he was up here on, on the speech, uh, opening, this, um, opening this wonderful conference. Um, and we have been working with Bernard and team in Kenya to develop an inclusive innovation ecosystem that will allow ventures to scale in Africa. We are working with partners in India to do something similar, and we work with partners in the UK. So now we're bringing that together into a sort of venture studio that will better help ventures go from country to country and from um, continent to continent. So it's a couple of quick uh, examples. One is Wazi Vision. Wazi Vision are fantastic. Two female entrepreneurs, absolutely great people. They had this idea for eyeglasses that would fit an African face better, that would be African designed. However, their technology wasn't scalable. They wanted to 3D print uh, d devices, then they wanted to use other manufacturing techniques. But we managed to get them partnered with a, a company in the UK that had already done CNC milling get them one CNC machine, get it shipped to Africa, and now they're scaling uh, brilliantly. Um, and we obviously have our Innovate Now, which I think you've heard about a couple of times, but obviously Bernard is doing a fantastic job there. So hopefully together we can work together to change the world. Let's make it happen, and thank you very much to all at Zero Project and Gatto for having us here.